Welcome to my channel, Wild Child at Art. Hi, I'm Erin. Well, this is my hand, obviously. This is my right hand, my dominant hand, drawn with my left hand. It was an exercise in my sculpting class, in fact. More about that class later. In this video, I'll be sharing what I call my art history. Not to be confused with actual art history. I'd like to share my original inspirations in art, a lot of my work over the years, and my hopes for a future career in the art field. As a kid, I didn't really understand what art actually was. I didn't even recognize it in my crayon phase when my only goal was to stay in the lines, or when I knew I was good at coloring because I could shade the edges to make things look three-dimensional. So yeah, I was cool from that point. My earliest memories of witnessing real art was watching my dad paint a bonsai tree. This bonsai tree, and in watercolor, which is really hard to tell and really hard to do with that level of detail. I thought it was amazing. It woke something up in my little kid brain, and that was recognizing line, color, and shape being the many parts of a whole, and that it could have a unique style. When I first laid eyes on Vincent van Gogh's purple irises and starry night, I started forming opinions on how art was making me feel. The mood of the painting and wondering what the artist might have been thinking but I didn't start painting until much later in my life. I started drawing first. I was probably about 17 when I started drawing with some intent. I was of course in love with Leonardo DiCaprio. I mean, hello, we all were. Anyway, I also tried my hand at abstract art, some fantasy and eventually tried depicting some of my dreams. And then I stopped doing any kind of art and I started working. I moved around a lot, and art was always on the back burner. When I moved to Oceanside, I signed up for three art courses at a community college. Here are some of my assignments depicting different painting disciplines, like leading lines, texture, balance, and rhythm. For this assignment, I had to assign an emotion or feeling to a color and paint it. I think I used feelings like confusion and freedom and optimism. I also had a crazy awesome sculpting class. I was really good in fact. However, during this time I wanted to join the military. And my instructor tried to change my mind about joining by offering me a spot in his honors class. As much as I really wanted to further expand my knowledge in art, I felt joining the military was the right thing to do. And while I was in, I was able to find a creative outlet in my job through photography, videography, and storytelling. If you like what you're seeing so far, click the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the little bell to receive notifications when I upload new videos. And thank you to my mom for these really cool t-shirts. In 2014, I started painting again. I was out of the Navy and I had a renewed sense of freedom. I mean, I could sleep in a real bed again and I didn't have a curfew. I did this museum level masterpiece of Noel Fielding with his flat gray skin and literally 1% shading and 0% highlights. Which brings me to this one. People ask me, what is this? It's from a photo of me when I was 17. I thought the look I was giving was kind of mysterious. I actually had headphones on and was listening to a CD. I know, right? Boomer! Anyway, I ended up with purple skin, which I thought looked pretty cool. It was also my first time using oil paint. You can tell because the texture looked a little lifeless after drying, and the oil soaked through the mixed media paper. I just didn't know what I was doing with it. I only ever used acrylic at the community college. The eyes were probably my favorite part. It kind of looked like you could jump in them and travel to another dimension. I was really weird back then. You can see that I painted over the lower part of my face, and that was because I thought the proportions seemed off. This was the original drawing, 
And yeah, even today, I still think it looks off. I don't know. Now the question is, will I finish it? I guess we'll see. In 2019, I was asked by a family member to paint this landscape of the Colorado Rockies for someone else in the family. It ended up looking wonderful. I surprised myself. My favorite part of the painting was the snow-capped peaks. I loved using bluish green in the shadows. It gave it a very snowy feeling. And that lit a fire under me. I started painting a lot. I tried different styles and I remembered how much I loved Impressionism. I learned a lot about oil paints and how to work in layers. With this painting, I learned a hard lesson about not using too much oil paint with a fast drying medium. You can see as I was exploring different shapes in the sunset sky, I just kept adding more paint. So when it dried, it cracked pretty badly and left sort of yellowish splotches from the medium. Now the only medium I use is mineral spirits and very sparingly. I also use much less paint. In this next painting, I started covering the canvas with multiple bright colors. So when I painted over it, little pops of brightness would peek through. I was still learning more about layering and I thought it looked really cool, at least the colors did. But in the end, I thought it looked a bit wonky. And I realized I needed to brush up on my drawing because drawing really is the foundation of painting. So I drew lots of different random things. I even tried a bit of hyper-realism, which turned out to be pretty awesome. I have a newfound respect for the work involved in that style of art. And then it was time to start painting again. This was the first painting I was paid for. The person who bought it fell in love with it at first sight. It truly felt a little weird accepting money from her because I didn't think it was my best artwork. But she wanted to encourage me to keep going. And it did encourage me. My mom and aunt introduced me to a friend of theirs who makes art with alcohol ink. We experimented a little bit with it it's tricky, and you kind of need some lungs to blow the paint around, or maybe even a leaf blower. But in the end, you can come up with some vibrant, unique designs. In the future, I'll be doing a video to show how it's done. This was a roadrunner for another family member, who I wouldn't let pay me because her birthday was coming up. I did use an image of a roadrunner off the internet, but my roadrunner was much puffier and way cooler. And I did not trace it. I don't believe in tracing. I feel artists who paint or draw need to build muscle memory in their hand so that they can eventually draw those lines and shapes naturally. And they won't need to trace. And then they can draw literally anything they see. This painting I've been adding to for over a year. The style has evolved over that time and I love it. I call it Dessert Hills because the colors kind of have an ice cream feel about them. I also realized my color perspective is a little all over the place, but I'm not gonna change it. It's just a learning experience. Now all I need to do is finish the ground at the base of the hills and I'm just gonna hang it up. I did these fairy tale dogwood trees, which I really like. It's soft and looks magical and I wanted to try something softer. I wanted the edges to be sort of so blended that you can't really tell they're there. These penguins were a wedding gift. Both the bride and groom love penguins, and while I was researching them, I learned that the male penguin will bring a pebble to the female that he's courting. The pebble will be the first in the nest they build together. And yeah, I forgot to put the pebble in there, but it's okay they will still build a loving nest home for themselves. The white-tailed deer were also a birthday present. I fussed a little too much with it, but it's still pretty cool. I'd love to try more deer in the future. The gifts continue. Here is a painting of the ocean in Hawaii. The people I gave it to took a trip there with their grown children, 
and I wanted to give them something to commemorate that time with them. While visiting my dad and stepmom, I realized that we had never painted together, which is kind of weird because my dad was my original inspiration for art. So I wanted to spend that time painting with him. I thought it would be cool to paint some of those awesome coastal rocks standing out of the ocean and this neat tree looking out over the water. I also spent some time with other family members, teaching them about oil painting. I painted this cute little lemon. I gave it a lot of texture to kind of look like the pores you see in lemons and oranges. Not sure if it looks like that, but it's pretty against the light countertop and lavender background. I love purple and yellow together. I could add more reflection between the countertop and lemon. Reflection really ties things together and I tend to forget to do that. And I also noticed the hard line around the bottom of the lemon. I can make that a little softer to give it more depth. This is the most recent piece that I've started. It's just a little mock-up for me to figure out how I want to place everything and experiment with the colors. The bigger finished piece is going to a friend of ours who wants a desert landscape to hang over her piano. Finally, this is my abstract piece that I've been adding to for over many, many years. It is, in fact, leftover paint off the palettes that I've used. I try to use up all of the paint on my palette, so I don't put a lot on to begin with. And that's my art history. Still not complete, but always evolving. Thank you for taking the time to see and hear my feelings on art and what I've learned and am still learning. If you have suggestions of a type of painting you'd like to see, leave a comment below. I'll see you in the next video.